creating awesome thumbnails is a snap with Photoshop Mix. And in this video, I'm gonna take you deep inside my iPad and show you how I create my thumbnails and how I do stuff like create cool borders or add in logos or backgrounds and more. Stick around. Ryan G. Johnson. Step numero one, install the app. Step numero two, put on protective eyewear. Step number three, take over the world. <laughs> Hey, Brian here. Let's jump into this video tutorial. We're talking YouTube thumbnails, custom thumbnails, and how you can use either an iPad or an iPhone app uh, to create beautiful thumbnails. In this particular video, we're going to talk about an app called Photoshop Mix, and I'll also uh, link to in the YouTube card and in the description some other videos that I've uh, covered and created that focus specifically on creating beautiful thumbnails using nothing more than an iPhone or an iPad. Let's jump in. First, I want to uh, mention a few things. I really like to create thumbnails that are consistent and congruent, that are harmonious, that work together, and the way I create that congruent feel, and if you're not sure what that word is, it just means um, they're similar, they're alike, is to always have a border that's based on splats and to always incorporate my logo. And the app that we're going to talk about today, which again is Photoshop Mix, allows me to add my logo and other image assets on top of each other. Here you can see another thumbnail and yet another thumbnail with my logo. They always have the splats for the border and again. And this is really how to create a congruent brand that people remember. How do you do that? Well, first let's jump into Meme Studio. Notice the app on the top row, Photoshop Mix. I'm going to click that now. It's really pretty darn simple to get started. I'm going to click the plus on the left. I'll click that now. And then I come in and I've got available in my camera roll. So I'm going to select camera roll and I'm going to basically take you through the process um, of what I do every time I create a thumbnail. So the first thing I'll do is kind of uh, frame it up. And here you can kind of see I, I started to create an app with, I'm sorry, a thumbnail with this particular image and let me take you through the process. So now what I have is the ability to add in layers, to do some blending, to do cutouts, to do different things and so on. And the idea with Photoshop Mix is it's primarily a number of different layers on top of each other and each layer can have different assets, maybe text, maybe different image elements and so on. Now I want to add a border and how do I do that? Well I click the plus which is located on the right, I'll click that now and I'm taken back to my uh, albums, my photo albums and notice in the upper left hand corner I've got one that's logos. I'll click that now and you can see I've got um, a white logo, a yellow logo, a gray logo, I've got different splats. And in order to create my uh, borders, I'm going to click and select this image and I'm going to select cancel. And now what I can do is I can move it around, I can pinch in and out to, to resize it. And what I'm going to do is just kind of drag it down here like so. And my goal is to create a fairly thick border. And the reason why is because remember these images are not um, displayed as, as real large images. They're little thumbnails and having a thicker border allows those to stand out pretty good. So I'm just kind of just balancing out and that looks good right about there. And once I have that in place, I can add another layer on top of it. Now the way I can do that is to again click the plus on the right and I can select again and maybe I want to bring in the same image and it's, it says that my original image the resolution is a bit uh, larger or smaller do I want to resize I don't want to resize I'm going to select cancel I'm going to kind of pull this down and you can see exactly how I'm working this here and that actually looks really good just kind of like that I'm going to kind of pull this into about here and great now, a couple things to mention. One of the things is notice if I click on the image 
a blue line is outline, outlining the entire image. And that means that um, it's kind of alive, right? I can click it and if I move it around, then I've moved the image and I don't want that, I wanna undo it. Notice there's an undo arrow on the top navigation pointing to the left. I'll click that now and everything goes back. Let's say I wanna resize the image to make it easier to work with. If I click outside anywhere other than the image, so I'm gonna click the gray uh, background, then it's no longer outlined in blue, and now I can move it around, I can resize it, and so on. Very, very helpful, and that helps me make it a lot easier to basically add in different layers. I'm gonna click the plus again, and once again, I'm gonna add in that same image I'm going to hit cancel and now what I want to do is kind of just kind of bring it in and add a little bit of a border on the right hand corner and it looks like I have maybe one more layer I can add so I'll bring this image in again I'll hit cancel I'm going to spin this around kind of like so that looks great and now what I have is, is I've maxed out all the layers that I can use to craft a, a, a thumbnail. And in this case, I'm working on the border. So what do I do? I don't have any more layers and I've got a ways to go. Well, what I do is I save this particular image and I continue working on it. To do that, click the export uh, or save function. It's in the upper right-hand corner. It's the box with an arrow pointing out. I'll click that and notice save to camera roll. I'll click that. It says complete. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the left arrow in the upper navigation, upper left corner. See the arrow pointing left? I'll click that. And that symbolizes we're going to start afresh. We're going to start again. I'll click the plus uh, again. And now I'm going to select that image I just created from my camera roll. And I select that image. And now I deselect the image so I can resize it. I position it where I want. And I start the process again. I go into logos. I select my border image. I come in. Oops. Now what I did there is notice nothing is selected. So when I go to try to touch it, nothing's happening. Right? But if I click on the image, now this particular layer is selected, and I'm going to come in, and I'm basically going to do something like this. That looks pretty darn cool. I, I, I'm really liking the way this is coming out. Now what I want to do is I want to add in my logo, and it's really pretty uh, simple. All we do is, again, we click on the plus, we select the album we want, and notice I've got another uh, album that I've created that is called Logos, and if I press that, I've got like YouTube. So I can pull in YouTube, I can size that. Maybe if I don't want that image, well, what I can do is I can select on the, the layer of the image, which is, again, the layers are located on the right-hand side, and you can see the YouTube is, is highlighted. If I click that again, notice we have Duplicate and Clear. Duplicate is really helpful. Let me first show you that, and then we'll pull in my logo and we'll carry on. I might just want to duplicate a layer. It makes working a little faster. I'll do that. I'll click Duplicate. I'll pull it up, and now we're uh, making great progress. That looks pretty good. I'm going to duplicate it again, and this time I'm going to kind of go something like this. And let's duplicate it one more time. And this time I'm going to really kind of resize this image. And I want it about, that looks good. Good. I'm going to go ahead and click Save to Camera Roll like we've been doing. I'm going to hit the Exit. I'm going to click Plus, which is going to allow me to start the process again. I select the same image we've been working on, and now it's in my work area. And let's talk about how I'm going to go ahead and get my logo in. So I select the album I want. I always like to, to basically put my logo against the black uh, borders. And I always like to use the yellow. These are my brand colors. Now, I could just do that, but I want to get it in the corner, and I want to have more of my splats used as a border. So how do I do that? Well, what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to clear this particular image. I'll select clear. I'm going to come in 
I'm going to select logos. I'm going to select this again, click cancel. And then what I'm going to do is kind of do something like this. And I'm going to do a lot of duplicating. And I'm just going to move things kind of like so. And you can kind of see the cool effect I'm getting here. And let's do that one more time. This time I'm going to spin it around. And great, now I've got a spot for my uh, logo, which is going to go in the lower left-hand corner. We're going to click Save As once again. We're going to come in. We're going to exit out of here. We'll click Plus. We'll select Camera Roll, and then the image we're working on once again. We're going to resize. We're going to come into my Image Assets. Now, this is one of the things you can do, right? Let me get out of here. I really like to organize my file system. If you look at my computer, you'll notice I have something that's kind of called brand assets, and inside of brand assets are my splats, are my logos, are sound clips, and I do the same exact thing on my iPad. That makes it really easy for me to, to really create um, what I want to create quickly to be able to find things and you can kind of do the same thing yourself. So let's kind of do this kind of a thing right here. There we go. I want it. Nah, it's not quite. Oops. There we go. It's not selected again. Now it's selected. Let's do this. This might be a little bit more with kind of what I want. I don't think I'm going to get quite what I'm looking for but that's gonna be pretty darn close. Okay, so that looks great, and now, finally, let's go ahead and add in the logo, and I can just simply pull it down, and you can see I can resize, pull it in, and this is how I make my thumbnails, and it really gives me a nice, consistent look, which is very powerful. You know, when people are on YouTube and they're looking to do something like editing, or they're looking to do something like rank their YouTube videos and they see a whole bunch of videos from one YouTuber and it's clear that those videos belong to one person, um, it's pretty powerful. Here's a great example. I'm on my iPad, I search for iMovie special effects and there you can see my thumbnail. It's got the G just as I showed you. It's got the borders just as I showed you. It's got the same font time and time again. I select that. And notice there's another video uh, in the upper right-hand corner for the suggested videos, and it looks very, very similar. And if I scroll, there's another uh, video covering iMovie again, and it becomes very clear that these are part of a, a channel that has something to offer. And when you do this strategy, when you create thumbnails that are consistent and congruent, it really helps your, your channel to stand out and make a statement. So very important. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, I'm gonna um, add additional videos you might wanna check out in the YouTube card right now that specifically go into how to use your iPhone or your iPad and the different apps I use. There's one called Typerama. It's really powerful. It's great for uh, creating um, thumbnails, and I'll link to that right now. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to get your feedback. I'll see you on the next video. Peace, love, and pixie dust. Poof.